Hello viewers, good evening and welcome to KVOX TV. Today I'm here with a Congolese boxer who is based in South Africa, has an impressive record, 20 victories, 14 fantastic knockouts, guys, undefeated, based in South Africa, like I said, and he's known by no other by Emil. Emil, welcome to KVOX yeah. TV. What's good? What's happening? What's good? Yeah. What's happening? Yeah, I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm easy. I'm blessed, my brother. I'm blessed to be alive. I'm blessed to be breathing. I'm great, brother. I'm uh, great. I mean, I was very excited to have you on the show. Uh, I spoke to your manager, Nelson, and to put this together. And, and yeah, he made it happen. So I'm very glad. And I'm sure people around the world who get a chance to watch this footage, even after it is uh, recorded, will get to know you and know you better. So, Emil, I mean, it's like a tradition on this, on this show that when you come on, you personally introduce yourself and brag about yourself, about your records and everything before we get into it. <laughs> man, listen, bro. I hardly introduce myself. I don't need more introduction, man. I'm known yeah. already, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, I'm, 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 you know how it is. I'm, yeah. I'm other than called by Emil King Kalikuzi, you know, all the way from DRC, but based in South Africa, you know what I mean? You know, soon going to the U.S., you know what I mean? So the hard work speaks for itself, man. Hard work speaks for itself, you know what I'm saying? Great. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I want to find out, so for somebody who is, based, who is based in South Africa and born in Congo, I mean, hmm. uh, how was the journey? How, was, how, how has it been for you in the boxing? Hey, man, listen, bro. Um, for me... It wasn't easy, bro. You know how the journey is, bro. The journey is never easy, man. Like, first of all, when we're talking about starting as a profession, as an amateur, as it amateur. wasn't easy, you know. As an amateur, it wasn't easy, you know. And and listen, man, I'm from Congo, you know what I'm saying? But I've been here since I was a little kid, you know. But then being there, being here as you from Congo, you know, not everyone's gonna believe in you, you know what I'm saying? But my dad. He, he's a, he was a former African champion, former international champion. So I jump in, it goes in the bloodline, you know what I'm saying? So for me, this is what I had and this is what I, all I, I got, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I was going to tell myself, it's either going to work or not work, but I'm going to make sure it works. But then I made it work, you know what I'm saying? So as I was saying, as an African, you know, not much people are going to believe in you. Then we always push, we always go up, you know what I'm saying? That's why they say black lives do matter, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't easy, but I made it, you know. It wasn't easy at all, no lie. I'm not going to tell you, hey, I just woke up one morning and I felt like I want to be a boxer. I woke up one morning and I said, I'm going to be a champion. Yeah, I did wake up, I said, I want to be a champion. It wasn't easy just getting to be a champion, you know what I'm saying? It was, you, you had, I had to pull bricks, rocks, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't easy at all, you know. And I want to tell people out there that's watching, and that's going to be watching me. It's not going to be easy, but never give up on your dream. That's what I did. Great. Sounds like a very good motivation. I mean, it's not going to be easy, but never give up on it. So talking about it's motivators true. that inspired you to want to do boxing. And you've already spoken about the fact that you walked in the shadows, shadows of your dad because he was uh, like a former champion. It, is he the only motivator? Was he the only motivator? My brother. In your not, for me, man, I'm gonna tell you straight up, man. It's not. A, it's not. A, I'm. I'm that person. I'm a self motivation to myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a self motivation to myself. I take my name. I take myself, and I put myself on another level. You know what I'm saying? I look at all great boxes. You know what I'm saying? Some say I fight like Floyd. Some say I fight like whatever. Roy joins. I don't care. But at the end of the day, I fight like me. But what I'm saying is that I took my name. And I took myself and I look at myself. I might not have much, but when I know if I put myself into this, whatever I put myself into, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it be a bomb. You know, I told myself I'm going to be a world champion before I turn 22. I did it. You know what I'm saying? I told myself I'm going to be a profession before I turn 16. And I did it. You know what I'm saying? So my dad was motivating me. You know what I'm saying? But then I was more motivating myself because I'm self-made and I'm self-motivation to myself. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say it's not gonna be easy, but then you gotta be able. You can you can be anyone can watch any role model, and anyone can watch 
um, motivation videos. Anyone can do all of that. You know, anyone can watch all that, but are you going to be motivated? You know what I'm saying? Are you right. going to be able to be like, I want to be more than that guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to be more than my dad. That's what I told myself, you know. My dad ended at a spot, but I told myself, I'm not going to end where my dad ends. You know what I'm saying? I want to be in places where my dad has never been. And that's what I'm trying to do. And this is where I'm going for. You know what I'm saying? That's why Nelson and Malik picked me. You know what I'm saying? At this early age, you know? So I told myself, I'm a self-motivated to myself. No matter what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? No matter. Some people are going to break your motivation. I'm a self-motivated to myself. If I can motivate myself, I can make sure other people motivate, motivate themselves too. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's me, bro. I mean, so, so, so. You were born in uh, um, Bakuvu. I hope I got the name right. In Congo. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So I mean, um, and then you, like you said from the introduction, you stayed your, your much of your time in South Africa, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been here since I was two years old. You know what I'm saying? All right. So I mean, um, as an amateur, did you represent the Congolese flag or South African flag? South Africa. South African flag. So South I, Africa. I, I, I'm trying to build a question that so you feel more South African than than the Congolese. I would say, man, <laughs> that's a very tricky question. But listen, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, man, my my whole life I've been I've been working hard here. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like South Africa deserves a good champ. They have champion, but I don't think they have this champ. What I'm saying. So I deserve that South Africa deserves a good African African. You know, I'm talking from Africa, not like South Africa. I'm talking from Africa back in the in the bad places. And yeah. they deserve a good champion. And when I'm gonna leave this place, I'm gonna leave like one of the best ever they ever had. You know what I'm saying? That's what I, I always wanted to do, you know. And I was I always I tried for the Olympics, you know. It didn't, it didn't go so good, but then wherever I went, I always put the ASA flag forward. You know what I'm saying? You know? Oh, great. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, uh, South Africa has some of the fun, uh, good, very good boxers. Uh, current, even currently, looking at Africa, for instance, now, the only world champion that Africa has is from South Africa. That's in Italian. He's, yesterday was his birthday. I mean, happy belated birthday to that guy. He's doing some fantastic yeah. job raising the flag of yeah. Africa. Um, I want. I, I was. I, I was trying to build it from that, from the Congo and then the South Africa, in the sense, just to be able to ask this question: If you feel more comfortable fighting and representing the flag, you say what? If I feel more, more um, presenting South yeah. Africa, yeah. or Congo flag, or South African flag. I've been mean, flying the South African flag. Man, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm gonna go back home, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta go back home, man. I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Yeah. If, it, if you could put yourself in my shoes, imagine you in the States, no matter what you happen, and you've been growing up and living all over the States. If they yeah. tell you to put your flag up, you gotta put your country, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No matter what's gonna happen, man. Yeah. I'm gonna put my country first. You know what I'm saying? Right. South Africa is my people. I love you all, but then if they gonna watch this, I'm always right. gonna put my country. Great, 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 great. Now let's talk about, I mean, um, your fights. All right, you've had twenty fights, winning. I mean, with winning twenty fights, no loss, no losses. Fantastic mm. um, knockout record of fourteen. Which of these fights come top of head immediately? That is, oh, so that yeah, Emil is in the ring. Da, 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 da. They, they, they give you all the accolades and everything. Which of them is top of your head? That gives you like, wow, this fight was very tough. Man. You know, let me tell you something, bro. All the, all the fights, they ain't easy, man. No matter what, no matter how good you are, a fight is not easy. It might be an easy fight, a first round knockout. Okay, that's good. You're lucky. You know, you're blessed. That's amazing. But then when a fight goes to distance, you know that that fight was something else. Yeah. They, they're all tough competitors. You know, they're all good competitors. They all had hard to put their foot in there, you know. Right. Coming up, they, they're fighting someone that they have never seen, you know. That's what I believe. For myself, I believe I'm the best ever being True. in Africa. You know what I'm saying? 
If you don't believe you're the best in what you're doing, exactly. Then, then what are you doing, my brother? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. for me, I gave them a chance and they and they and they had a chance, but then they, they couldn't take it. But then I I gotta do what I gotta do, you know. In this game, it's either killed or be killed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's how the it. game I mean, is. Yeah, that's how it is, yeah. That's how the game is. It's either kill or be killed. So I just I, I had to I had to I had to take them down. But for me, man, all of them were tough competitors, but then at the end of the day, I'm still the winner, man. It doesn't matter who who came to me, I still beat them all. So for me, until until someone I wanna see if I ever lose and God tells me I'm gonna lose, you know, and he puts that, yeah, someone gotta kill me in that room. I, I'm being for <laughs> real. Someone gotta take my leg off. You know, I'm, I'm I'm being honest, man. Someone got to take my arm off or something. I got to I gotta come out that ring with, with, with a crutch or something, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, then, saying. at this point, I yeah. still believe I got what it takes to be whoever comes in front of me, man. And they're all good competitors, but then I'm still the best man. Yeah, it's always, it's always good to have that kind of feeling that you're the best. And, I mean, looking at your record, everybody who would look at your record and have the opportunity to see you fight, would we'll definitely say that you're one of the best to come out from Africa. Now let's talk a little bit about IP uh, MG Boxing. I mean, how did you get in contact with um, your, your your management? Hey, bro. So listen, man. This thing, I, I tell my I tell my fellas this. So what happened is that my last fight, you know, they yeah. they 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 sent me up. Uh, what is this? He um. Uh, Nelson, he he hit me up on, on what's this, on, on IG, you know what I'm saying? So okay. he just he just he, he just came up randomly. But then Nelson, he's a businessman and he does his own business things, and and he and you know what he do? He a manager and he has couple, a lot of boxes, not just me, you know what I'm saying? A lot of good boxes. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of the big boxes that's coming up. You know what I'm saying? But right, then right. what I'm saying is that what he did is that he's been checking me out. You know what I'm saying? That that was. That was that's one thing that hit me up. He's been checking me out. He's been, you know, doing his research here and there. You know what I'm saying? And then was in February, he hit me a message and told me, listen here, kid, I want to get you to the States. I want to I wanna take you from where you are to elevate your career. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it's an opportunity. Not even, you, you, you're not going to get. Not, not ever you're going to get. So, you know, we talked about it and we, we got on the same page. And, yeah. you know, we do. Thing, you know, he do his thing, I do my thing, he does research, I do my research, you know what I'm saying? And now we're on the same page, you know what I'm saying? Now we're sitting on the same side, you know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, um, so from your, from what you're saying, it means you guys got into contact not too long ago. So it means work hasn't really started. Bro, work has already started, man. What you talking about? These, these American fellas, they don't play. They 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 on time, bro. They on time, bro. Work already started. Some other business thing has started. So in no time I might be in the US, you know what I'm saying? In no time I'll be in the US, you know, I'll be fighting there. You know what I'm saying? So very, very, very soon, you know what I'm saying? You gotta believe in the process, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna happen. That's for sure, you know. That's for sure. All right, great. I mean, a lot of fighters have definitely have long term and short term goals. Um, but for you. A 22 year old boxer, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, um, 22, 22, 22, like 22, yeah. 22. So, for a 22 year old boxer, I mean, what are your let's let's start with a short term goals looking at title wise? Which titles are you looking at within a short period of time? And then we'll talk about the long, the, your long, um, long term plan. My short term goal, my first short term goal. It's being alive, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm alive, my nigga. You know what I'm, saying? Yeah. I'm alive, man. That's, yeah. that's the first one. You know, I thank God. Right, I thank right. God. Right. But on a serious, man. So you know that I'm a I'm a former IBA champion. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that I'm looking at when when I when when I fly to the US, I want to go back to the to 140 145 and fight again on on my IBF. World champion, you know I'm saying, I'm talking big time and, and recover that belt and be a champion because at this point, I'm sitting at 150, you know, one, one, 155. So right. I'm looking to go back down a little bit, you know, 
and then recover that belt. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking to be a world champion at all three divisions. I'm talking, I'm talking junior middleweight, I'm talking middleweight, and I'm talking super middleweight. You know what I'm saying? So all three belts, all three divisions, I'm trying to be world champion. If more comes, I'm going to take it. You know what I'm saying? More is always better. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, the IBF is something that I'll be, I'll be so interested, you know, but then yes. I never know. I might be saying that, but then if some other thing might come up, you know, some other deals might come up, you know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm going to go out there and just be a beast. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be honest with you because I'm already working hard. I'm already doing my thing through this corona. I'm still doing my thing. I'm still working hard. I look fresh already. So for me, I'll, I'm still going to discuss it with my team and everything, but then if, if, if another battle pops out, you know, and it's on a good deal and we're sitting on a good on a good place, you know, I'm going to take it. That's how it is. All right, great. I mean, um, some of us are really looking to when you're going to win a world title, looking at, at uh, the fact that you've already won an IBF um, youth title. It means it puts you at least very closer to a world title. So, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm more forward to see you with a world title soon. Um, most of your fights has been in South Africa, all right? Most, most mm. of your fights has been in South Africa. Which one was made you go wow? Looking at it, I mean, talking about the crowd, crowd wise, the fans. Which ones were like, which fight would you do, or which was the fights would you go like, wow, I mean, my people love me? Mm -hmm. Well, with that question, most fighters been in South Africa, and most and all my fights has been in Cape Town. I don't think in you Cape noticed Town. that. Cape Town, yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. So basically, my brother, the reason I do this is that I made a, I made sure, you know, Cape Town and South Africa is big. So we got Joburg, we got Durban, and we got um, and we got Cape Town. So what I did. And we got East London. So what I did is that everyone want to go, I want to fight here, I want to fight there, I want to fight there. Now, what I did is that I want to create a platform that Cape Town boxers will look at themselves and say, hey, I want to follow Emil's footsteps. You know what I'm saying? So I make sure all my fight, 20 fights is in Cape Town. So when I leave Cape Town, Cape Town will be like, wow, we this kid, he did something that we can we can finish his footsteps over here. You know what I'm saying? So I don't wanna be I wanna fight. I'm fighting Joba five fights and I'm fighting Cape Town five different places. No, I wanna stay in stable over here, you know what I'm saying? And make sure that everyone, you know what I'm saying, everyone yeah. that that's from Cape Town, you know, like you bring it's like you're fighting for the hood, you know what I'm saying? Or you're fighting for you're fighting for the city, you're fighting I'm fighting I fought here. I did fight for money, but obviously I'm fighting for that. People, Cape Town boxers, you know, they don't give up because in Cape Town, boxing was a little bit low. You know, it's only now later on, youth, the upcoming, they 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 bringing boxing to another level. You know what I'm saying? And I and, okay. and I and I'm one of those. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of those top there over there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's only now that people are seeing, okay, shit, Cape Town is coming top. You know what I'm saying? Cape Town is coming big. You know, they Joba. It's, it's, it's okay, it's all right, but now Cape Town is, you know, is making that noise, you know what I'm saying? So we need those youngsters and those people that are out there and those people that think Cape Town don't have shit, Cape Town still got a lot of shit, I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? And uh, coming back to your question, coming back to your question, uh, what fight, what thing that was the, mm, the bomb, as I say, bro, I beat all of them, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. They all came, you know. they all lost, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So for me, man, if you haven't knocked me out or you don't put me down at least one or two times in the ring for me to get back up, so I don't think none of them will be more tougher than what's in the U.S., you know what I'm saying? So for me, all came and all lost, you know what I'm saying? They all try. As a boxer in Africa, all right, I'm sure you look at the big, I mean, the screens to see, the, especially the people in your divisions, the champions, and, uh, and you definitely map up plans and strategies that if you get the opportunity, how you gonna I mean face them and probably collect their titles and all that. But for an African fighter or a, fight, a fighter fighting out of Africa, what are some of the things that you think doesn't like doesn't equip us right to get opportunities to to fight out there? 
you, you your question is that what what doesn't give them the, the opportunity to go fight out there yeah for us as africa because it doesn't really happen it, for us like that you know but what what are, what are some of the things that for you as an offer because i'm asking because you're a fighter i'm sure you are doing mm -hmm. everything you are you're training keeping in shape doing everything right for you to get attention of whoever in the world for instance the big guys if it is match room or uh, top mm -hmm. rank or frank warren's promotions Pillsbury, or whoever in the world to be able to get mm -hmm. his or her attention to put you on this bill to fight what do you think is the limiting factor for us as african fighters Uh, my my que my answer for that question, I'm going to give you a short answer. For that one, I might have another one, but let me say this one first. Yeah. If you're a fighter and you're out there and you're watching, and you're watching this, if you are, I'm, I'm telling the fighters out there, if you're a fighter, you're out there, you're watching other people, you, you want to be like those people, you want to get there. Oh, I'm tired of fighting in Africa. I want to be there. Take this down. Go on your laptop. Open your laptop, or go on your phone, and if you think you got what it takes, if you think you got what it takes to to shake those people up there, and you think you got what it takes, email LPGM Global Boxing Management right now, and you see your life will change. But other than that, my man, the thing is that it's your management. If your management ain't good, I'm sorry, bro. If your management ain't good as an African boxer, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. There's so much African boxer that got talent. You know what I'm saying? Right. African, East African, West African, North African, Peace African. I'm talking about all kinds of African. There's so much boxers that got talent, you know? I'm yeah. talking, not even that, man. I'm talking basketball, you know? I'm talking about, you know, all Almost kinds of sport. Sport. rugby, football, right. you know? There is a lot of talent out there, but if you if your management is not good, your background is not good, you know what I'm saying? People that don't believe in you, you know what I'm saying? You know, nowadays we got technology, you know, maybe it might help you, but then you get a lot of people that have put a thousand of videos on the internet, but he's still at the same spot, or even gets older and he still got nothing, you know what I'm saying? So what I would say is that, if your management ain't good as a boxer, because now we're talking boxing side, you know, as a right. boxer, if your management ain't good and and everything of yours, because most people they might they might do this. Hold on, they might do this. You might be good, you might be good, but then you go fight in the U.S. You come back in Africa, then you might you know you know how Africa is. Everyone want to. Everyone want to bite from your ass, you know. Everyone want to eat from that piece of pie that you just made, just that little pie that you made, and everyone want to eat from it from you. You know what I'm saying? You go fight in the U.S., you come back, um, maybe you fought for 50, 50,000, 50,000, you come back, you find back you only had about five, you know what I'm saying? Five hundreds, you know what I'm saying? It's not cool, you know, it's what happens in Africa, it's been happening and it's still been happening. So, if your management is on a low budget. I'm talking about he's on a low and they just want to they, they they see you as they saw themselves not going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna go far, you know what I'm saying? But if you are boxer, nowadays we got technology. Trust me, boxers out there that's watching this, we got technology, we got all kinds of boxing people that that are watching you. Don't keep don't stop posting on Instagram, don't stop posting on Facebook, tag them, tag whoever you want to tag, and send those emails as much as you can. I'm telling you, one day, trust me, my brother, my sister, wherever you are there, God is going to answer your prayer. You know what I'm saying? God is going to answer your prayer. They will come back to you. Trust me on that. That's one thing for sure. Right, I'm feeling, I, I mean, I like I like the way you've, you've taken to the internet to, 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 to let these people get to hear about because that's what we've got. And yet, with a very good management, I agree that you can you can you can be at the top very at, I mean at the top with, with all these guys. I, I'm just you know, rush to ask the next question. <laughs> but, yeah, but you can come here. You can come in. You know, when 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 I was young, you know, I was young in my early profession day, you know, I always even when I was an amateur, I was I used to send emails. <laughs> I'm like, this is something that I don't tell people, you know, but I'm gonna say it out because 
I'm on another level, but then it doesn't matter. Is that I used to send emails to to top rank. I used to send emails to you know. I don't even know I'm doing the right thing. I don't even know if the emails are getting there. You know, I used to send emails to so many promoters, even promoters that are big in South Africa. You know, they come back to me. You know, I get a downfall. You know, they're like, Nah, we okay. I'm like, It's okay. You guys might not want me today. But then in a few years, you guys are going to be calling me, you know, and it's happening today. <laughs> they're right. giving me calls. They, they all want me just because of what I got now. You know what I'm saying? I got a better deal now. They want me, you know what I'm saying? So, right. so right. I'm saying as a young kid, I used to be sending those emails as I want my brothers and sister to do the same thing. You know, don't give up because they might reject you today. But then <laughs> after two to three years, Man, my brother, my sister, you know what I'm saying? My elder ones, trust me, they'll be on your doorstep. You know what I'm saying? They'll be on your doorstep. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, bring up now, the question. Me, Let's go. Let, yeah, yeah. Let me take let me take you back a little bit. I mean, we've been talking about the COVID nineteen that has been a problem. I mean, it's it's been a little setback for especially people in in sport. Right, it's made things a little bit slow. But then you met you mentioned that you've been training in the um, within the situation and keeping fit, uh, trying to keep um, being in shape. What would you say um, um, the government's response in trying to, uh, I mean, since you're based in South Africa, what would you say the government's approach has been in handling the situation? Well, what I would say for the government, man, that's the one thing we can never fight. We can never fight the government, you know? That's right. The disease, first of all, the government did a, a great thing locking up everything. We, we still on lockdown in South Africa. We still oh, okay. on lockdown. We still on level three. You know, we're still going to get to level two. Level. I know, in, I, I know in the U.S. they will never one, you know. Mm. But yeah. then the one thing we can never fight is the government, you know, because if they would let this thing just, they just let it go and just um, let it run free. Trust me, my brother, it will be, it will be messed up. It will right. be messed up. Right. But then right. one thing I would say is that I, I've been watching a lot of news and I always watch news is that if the government would have followed one of the best one, it's this country much, a lot of people doesn't even give this country a lot of credit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, because this country had the least coronavirus, um, um, the least coronavirus um, cases and they had only about four people die. Only four people in the whole country. I don't know if you know it, but it's Taiwan. You know, Taiwan, they they don't have nothing corona, no lockdown, and everything is going fresh. You know what I'm saying? They respected wow. it. I'm not saying that Africa is not respecting it, but corona in in Thailand does not work. Is not is not is not is not on. You know, there is no quarantine. There is nothing like that, and life is still going. So and they don't know. They donated about 24 million marks in the whole world. 24 million marks for the whole world. You know what I'm saying? I mean, wow. I don't know if you watch this, but this this is, is what has been happening, you know. And no one is giving is giving Thailand, um, Taiwan uh, this this credit, and they deserve this credit. You know, congrats to them. You know, they deserve this credit. And I was surprised when I saw this, but then if the government would have just did what they did with that, you know what I mean? Just that little bit. We'll all be in a happy place. You know what I mean? Great. I'll, I'll, I'll check out Taiwan myself after the interview. And I can sure. see um, a lot of um, comments coming on, but it's all in in uh, Spanish. So I can't, I can't read them. Usually I take feedback from, um, uh, I mean, I take questions from the fans and I ask you as well. But unfortunately, I can't understand what they're saying because it's Spanish. But let me ask you this question. I mean, Boxing is returning slowly. You've seen um, top rank promotes on Tuesday. Uh, that was the Shaku's fight, and yesterday yeah, sure. Mandalino was also on, on um, fighting tonight. There's a heavyweight fight in uh, in Poland, so we see boxing return slowly. As a boxer, how does it make you feel? Man, that's exciting, bro. At least we can go back to gym, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> but then for me. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. for me, it's not much as a as a worry for me because yeah. um, the gym that I, uh, I I got the gym I, I I can get the gym keys easy for me. You know what I'm saying? So 
I can ease. I don't need anyone to be at the gym. I can just be myself there, and I and I've been there. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I sometimes even during the quarantine month, you know, um, time, I've been at the gym. You know, I'm talking about. I sleep over there. I sleep at the gym. You know what I'm saying? It's something that that I do. You know, just for myself. So right. I'm happy that they say boxing gonna be back in South Africa. Um, right. We talk about next month, the 15. That's about soon. So some uh, some other boxes that don't have the opportunity to have the gym keys or to be going to the gym, you know, and we're talking about yeah. other opportunities about um, health, fitness, and you know, some other people they can't stay away without training. So it will be good that they can also go back to their to their routine. They can also go back to their training. You know what I'm saying? They can all go back and flow with things. So it's gonna be a good thing for for sports to come back, not just boxing, but for sports to come back. Because a lot of business people are losing money. A lot of sport people are losing money. You know, a lot of athletes are losing money. So it's going to be a good thing. But everything takes time, you know. Everything takes time right. because these right. people, the government knows what they're doing. You know, the athlete people, they, we, we, we might be panicking, but those government over there, they, they're protecting us. You know what I'm saying? They're protecting sure. us. You know what I'm saying? Sure. To be honest sure. with you. All right, not too soon. I mean, we passed 30 minutes, but I have some two questions that I would like for you to respond to. I mean, boxing is slowly returning, like you're saying, like like we are both talking about. And uh, you fought most of your fights in Cape Town, like you've admitted. So after COVID-19, are we going to see you fight in South Africa again? Or we'll, we'll, we'll see your first fight in the U.S.? Man, for that question, my brother, uh, for that question, you know, we, we I'll see what comes up, you know. I'll see what comes up, you know. Whatever whatever my managers tell, tell me, man, I do, you know what I'm saying? But then we we, we spoke because I think I think the next one might be in the US, but then for now we 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 it won't be just we we remember at the end of the day, top rank and um metro matchroom they 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 stable you know what i'm saying he's a big company you know what i'm saying so right. even when you see the, you saw the fight the fight was legit you know people are sitting in distance and people right. are clean and all of that the hygiene and that but in africa do we really have that stuff you know what i'm saying we don't have that that that, have that money you know what i'm saying it's going to cost a lot of money so right. so i would, I would say Let's wait for everything to cool back, everything to 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 come back, you know. And then, right. for, in America, boxing happened, no problem. But Africa, we gotta think again. You know what I'm saying? We gotta think that's again. True. You know, right. Right. that's for sure. I mean, what I'm saying. That's for one sure. question coming in real quick was like, what would be your ideal fight? I mean, your dream fight. That's a question for someone. My dream someone. fight. Yeah. Yeah, man. I've been waiting for this question. My dream fight, my brother. <laughs> Is to fight Canelo Alvarez. You know, say all the way from Mexico. He's my, he's my one of my role models. But then that would be my dream. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's that's one of the guys I, I I've been watching for a long time, and that's been motivating me too. You know what I'm saying? From a nothing to a something. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. He they say he lost, but then for me, he's one of the best, and I would like to take on the best. You know what I'm saying? For me to be the best, I gotta fight the best. You know what I'm saying? You just heard from from Emil himself. He would like to face Canelo. I mean, because he's the best and he would like to face the best. Now, last question. uh, um, I mean, yesterday you got confirmation or news came in that, I mean, Anthony Joshua um, and Tyson Fury will face each other in the two fights. They already agreed in the two fight deal to face each other in 2021. For you, I mean, where do you stand with this, this news? Man, that question, man. I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. They they great boxers. Tyson Fury is a world champion. Yeah. Anthony Joshua is a world champion. You know, it's right. champion versus champion. This is a very good matchup. And this is a great matchup. Undisputed fight. You know what I'm saying? This is gonna be a very huge mega fight. You know, two fights in a row. You know what I'm saying? But then. I still believe my brother Deontay Wilder got what it takes to beat both of them. But I ain't going to judge. I ain't going to judge. But for this fight, the first fight, I'm going to give it to this fight. I'm going to give it to to my brother 
Anthony Joshua because I'm sure 100%, 100% he's going to beat Tyson Fury. No matter what people say, he might have so much fans. He might have no matter what fans. Hey, you right. got to watch it. Anthony Joshua, he, 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 he's a bomb. Trust me on that. He's a bomb. Yeah, trust me on that. Right, right. All right, yeah. I, 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 I forgot to tell the fans, I mean, you are the swag star, right? Correct. You can yeah. see it, bro. You can see it. You can see it, bro. <laughs> All right, swag star. I mean, I want to thank you for uh, making time for us and coming on the show. I mean, we wish you the very best. And before we go, I'd like to get your last words. Man, you know, I want to thank you guys for having me. You know, thank you for your time. It's it's amazing. It's a, we, we I never done this with TK. What is it called? TKO boxing. It's amazing. I love it. That's what it is. Yeah. Thank you so much, and thanks to my managers. You know, LPGM. Thank you so much. You know, and thanks to all my fans that's watching this. You all been great. You all been the best. And you know, I thank God and thank life, my brother. Thank God and thank life, and thank you, man. We all base. All right, thank you. I mean, thank you also for coming on the show, like I said, and we wish you the very best. We wish to see you fight your dream fight and see you live the title and bring it back and make it all of Africa proud. That's for sure, my brother. That's for sure. We're all together. And we're all going to be united one day. Peace and love and take care. All right. Thank you. All right.